trying to make money. So it's just kind of this thing. But if you know SQLite, you can present that data in a way that is good for you, good for your case, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, like you said, uh, I started getting into SQLite big at PCI because this was actually um, what I consider like kind of the golden age of mobile forensics. Like you could get physicals on iPhones. Even once we couldn't get physicals, we were still getting large file system dumps. We were getting physicals on Androids, um, all this sort of stuff. So we had tons and tons of data and mobile devices were all, and still are, all SQLite. And so, um, you know, I was in it all day. And uh, so it just, and it's fun. Honestly, it's fun. Uh, it's a very quote unquote easy pr pro, uh, scripting language or what query language, whatever you want to call it, to get into initially um, because it's very like, uh, I, there's a word for it. And maybe somebody in the comments can tell me what that word is, but like a coding language that is like how you talk, whatever that means. You know, it's like, I want this data out of this column. So I sl say, select this column from this table. That's That's like... A simplified SQL query. And so once you kind of get that down, SQL is really easy to work with, and then you can start to do some really powerful stuff. So yeah. Um, I actually yeah, started... Show us, right? You have all... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So show. let me share my screen here. Um, make sure I'm sharing the right one. Yep. I've got three of them. So... Um, so yeah, like I started with Excel, um, doing V lookups, and this is what I meant. Like you can plug in data, so like these numbers would might be missing, or you might not have something. And then through investigations, you you know through interviews, through other sources of information, you could fill in that data uh, to make it look good. So that's kind of where I started. And then um, when I wanted to do more powerful stuff, jumped into SQLite. And some of those uh, the basic syntaxes of uh, of SQLite to kind of steal the verbiage from your your slide. Um, yeah, and it looks like some people are coming up with some uh, some uh, words for you that are bigger than what I normally pronounce on a day to day basis. And I, I forgot to tell everyone, Justin and I are living about ten to fifteen seconds in the future. So if you make a comment and it seems like we're ignoring you, we'll we'll come back because literally. Yeah, it's like the old style TV. That way, if you know, I go off on some tirade of obscenities, they can beat out <laughs> all that. <laughs> you know, it's, I, I don't know why it's a buffer thing, uh, but uh, it, it takes about 10 seconds from when we really say something for it to reach you. Um, so just be be aware of that. Um, if if we don't answer something or respond to you in chat right away, that that's the real reason. It's not that we 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 don't like you or anything, uh, Justin Root. I, I would tell you. Uh, uh, Maybe. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, tell us a little bit more about the, some of the basic syntax then. So in forensics and DFIR, mostly, mostly what you're going to do is use the select statement. It's the largest, most complex quote unquote statement in uh, SQL, but you're rarely going to be creating databases. Um, for examinations. Now you may get into other stuff when that's totally cool, but for examinations, you're going to be using select. And so that's where we're going to live. You're, you better not be updating, right? We're not going to be changing or modifying tables. Um, and yeah, so you're going to be living in the select world. And for, if you want to tell a story or you want to make like charts or visualizations or whatever, I listed some of the ones over here on the side that you can use when working with the data, like count will count the number of times something happens. Some obviously adds stuff and we'll look at um, how we can compare those two. STRF time is a date format. Uh, and then group by is really, really powerful. Um, and we'll take a look at these here in a second. But if you want to see a bunch of stuff related to just one contact. You want to see statistics. How many times has this contact done something? How long has this contact done something or whatever? You can group that in and get statistics such as min, max, total count, sums, all this sort of stuff that's really cool. And then order by is a simple sort. Um, 
And also, Kevin, if if they ask a question, we got to jump back. Don't hesitate to interrupt. So, okay, uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's so good. I have Tourette's. I'll I'll interrupt. Yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, but here's the cool thing that I like about this is, with the exception of one thing that I'll show, um, all these queries that I use here to kind of create what I think are cool visualizations that tell a story about the data. You can see here that like, even though it goes down to line 11, like there's four lines of comments and I have select on its own line. And, you know, like these are not huge involved queries, but they're super powerful nonetheless. So, um, so let's take a look at this. So quality versus quantity. And, and this is where we're taking something, we're letting our tools do the heavy lifting. Um, Cause we're, we're we're letting our tools get the data out. We're letting our tools get the basic, like this contact, talk to this contact or this call or this URL history. That's cool. That's perfect. It's doing that heavy lifting for us. Now we're going to take it a step further. Um, and that's what I mean by quality versus quantity is right here. We've written a simple query to um, count the number of times a certain phone number was called either to or from. I, I didn't break it down, just simple. So we can see here, whoop, wrong way. We can see here that this number here contains the vast majority of the calls. And that tells a story, okay? Uh, whatever this number is, great. They did a lot of calls either to or from. Maybe that's of interest, okay? Now, we have the same data set but now we're grouping them by how long the person talked with that contact. And again, to or from doesn't matter on which direction the call came. We're just looking at simple statistics here. And notice this number is not part of our data. And so what story are you trying to tell? Who, who do they talk to the most? On one side, it may look like it's this number, okay? Because it's got a lot of count. But when you look at the duration, I've got the little chart up there, the duration is zero. And honestly, Kevin, what this is, is, uh, do you remember, you know, Nick Jenkins, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, Nick Jenkins worked with me at BCI, and then he also came to Access Data for a while. And now he's working um, in a security department uh, out east still now. <clears throat> but when he was here at Access Data with me, uh, he was building this data set. And there was a radio like contest or call in, you know, be the seventh caller or whatever, those types of things. You know about that, Kevin. Uh, <laughs> and so that was him basically just like call, 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 call. <clears throat> and then he would hang up and call back over and over. And so he generated this um, massive count, but no duration. And <clears throat> he didn't have this, this application in mind when he did it. <clears throat> Sorry. But I love this data set that he built <clears throat> because of this visualization right here. I'm losing my voice. Yeah, no, that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, so it shows, uh, you know, he can say it's a radio station. I mean, I know he's probably stalking somebody and they just weren't answering when he'd call back. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. 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 <laughs> in here anywhere. Uh, sorry, Nick. Love you. Love you man. <laughs> but yeah. It could, could be something like that. I'm stalling so you can clear your voice up, man. That's the real reason. No. It's, a, it's a radio trick. <clears throat> years in, in radio will have person A talk until uh, till you're not going to die anymore. Yeah. <laughs> But no, no but that's, yeah, is, that's a really valid rifle the data here. That's it's awesome. Yeah, and I I like that your point though about somebody stalking because <clears throat> then that brings it back to this one over here most calls. Even though it's zero duration, it doesn't matter. This is still valuable. And you could see like, hey, listen, this is not normal. You can see in this graph how many calls <clears throat> he's making to this person over and over again. So what's your application? Is it a stalking case? Is it a harassment case? Uh, man, this graph over here on the left, my left, your whatever, uh, is great. Is it a different thing? Maybe you wanna go to the one on the right. <coughs> okay. And notice how simple the queries are for this. This is the graph 
<clears throat> to the count, and this is the one for the sum. I'm getting emotional, guys. Sequel eight. <laughs> Man, you're, that's the worst, right? I mean, your throat was fine for like the half hour of the pre-show that we were kind of going through and all the <coughs> weird funkiness of pre-broadcast. Oh, that's something <clears throat> I got to ask everybody too while uh, I hate to derail you for a minute, but I'll let you. No, go ahead. Is if, <coughs> you know, you and I were in the, uh, in what we call the green room or the, the, the pre-room, right? Before we go live. Yet uh, one of my staff members who wasn't logged in as an administrator to the account here could actually see us in the green room, which was so weird. And if anyone else had that experience, like was sitting in a, uh, uh, the green room kind of waiting for the webinar to start and you could see Justin and I practicing, um, uh, let me know, just kind of make a comment in the chat. Yeah, we, we saw your ugly mugs or whatever. I'll be curious because, you know, we're, we're, we're doing this embed process mm -hmm. into cyber social hub from big marker. Who's the service we use for these. Um, and, it was a little buggy because I've edited the uh, the iframe that they recommend use because it wouldn't allow us to do certain things. So I I just changed it to make it do what we wanted to. Um, so I don't know if the bugs in there or uh, or not. So just kind of lay that down there um, and go from there. Uh, you can cool. see us. All right, all you man. All right, no perfect. <laughs> so again, simple queries. What are you trying to What are you trying to tell? What's the story that you are trying to give? back in here come on there we go so we can take that to 11 <clears throat> and we have the dates on the left this is sms now and we have like a total count of sms during that day but then what i wanted in this case was to see okay i can see how many texts they have sent or received that day but who are they talking to and how many messages per contact? So I wrote a query that I'll show here in a second that, that shows this information. Okay. I can see per day how many messages were sent or received. And then it breaks down within the same column, the contact and then the number of messages sent or received from that person. And you notice here that we have two Elliot Aldersons. That's how iOS functions. iOS actually contains two contacts for every iOS user, one iMessage contact ID <clears throat> and one SMS ID um, if they've talked to them on SMS. So you'll actually get a double there. So that's why we have these two here. One of these is iMessage and one of these is um, SMS. And I could technically add a line in there to specify which one's which probably a good idea to be honest um but you can see now we can kind of get more information <clears throat> than um what's initially shown to us in a just a default report and you can do this with filters and other things but the cool thing about this is you can massage this data with sqlite to make it appear how you want so this query is a bit more complicated <laughs> than <laughs> the other ones <laughs> Um, but <clears throat> I just wanted to throw this in because the other ones are, are great and they show great information, <clears throat> but this right here is actually the same format as those smaller ones. It just builds on it a few times. <clears throat> and so, man, I'm sorry. I don't know. I I'm dying, but yeah. A little more complicated but the other cool thing about this <clears throat> which um you can do in sqlite is you can actually write a query to access two databases at the same time you may be able to do more than two i've never got that brave but um you can see this one is pulling from <clears throat> the sms database and this one's pulling from the address book database so we're querying two databases at the same time and bringing that information together. And the reason we do this in this case is you have databases like iOS SMS that don't store the contact name inside of the database. It has a handle ID, it has a phone number or an email, mm -hmm. but the contact name is stored in the address book. Hmm. And if we're working on stuff like that, <clears throat> we wanna be able to look across, so. Yeah. Do you have um, 
you know, and I hate to put you on the spot here. Are, would you be willing to give some of these samples out to, uh, to the attendees here? <laughs> you can make it available yeah. either via, uh, a handout, because uh, I, I, I again, we're we're probably going to blow this system up because I'm not that familiar with it as I should be doing a, a live webinar like we are. Um, yeah. But there's a section for handouts. I don't know if we can drop maybe one of these in here if it's if it's not yeah. proprietary. I've got them. I'll put it up here in a second. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, no, that's awesome. Why don't you go if if you can do that and maybe take a drink and recover just a second? Is um, I, I popped up a couple polls too about people using uh, SQL, and I apologize. I didn't know they were going to do pop-ups to you. I thought they just appear in the polls section. So if you guys just got bombarded with pop-ups, I, I completely apologize um, for that. Um, yeah, Megan told me that they uh, appeared as, as pop-ups. Was it like one after the other or anything like that? That's just uh, just odd. Um, but um, over in the poll section, uh, Justin kind of just switching channels to the to allow you to get a drink or something was um, um, if they're using SQL like commands in their current investigations and, you know, uh, 12 says no, eight says yes. So, you know, you got a nice, um, you know, 57, 43% split. So uh, that's surprising. Uh, I, I really didn't start using those until, until much later. That was pretty, uh, pretty awesome. I think you're still on mute, my friend. Yeah, I'm just going to upload that. So <clears throat> I think one of the questions was, um, we're querying these basic command examples. What is the context? So I'm in mobile data primarily, but I'm going to jump out of mobile data here in a second. Um, and I'll show you some other stuff. I've just got to find um some of these little um things we can put up as a handout so but <clears throat> yeah so whatever you want i'll show you how to do this with some web browser data and um you can get some stuff from that so um i see the handout spot i'll i'll upload it here in a minute <clears throat> Because I'm not sure where I need to put it. Yeah, if you click handouts, got I it. think it says share a handout. Maybe you can't yeah. do it. I don't know. I got it. Um, so again, you know, I didn't want to put you on the spot, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. These things, these hubcasts are normally like really informal, like just us like hanging out, ch chatting when with a bunch of random strangers uh, stalking us at that point. Not that I'm calling any of you guys random strangers stalking us, but it's kind of what I said. <laughs> For those of you that don't know me, half the time, or more than half the time, I'm completely not serious. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of names in here I don't recognize, and uh, they're probably thinking, who is this weirdo calling us stalkers? It's it's out of the most love, really, is what it is. There we go. Oh, thanks, Tim, for that. Didn't see the pop-up until you exited full screen mode. Okay, that's good to know. Kind of going back through some of these uh, chat questions, too, that we're just we're, we're now seeing. Um, have you loaded the data from SQLite database DBS to another DB like MS SQL to query two databases with one query, or is this possible with a specific SQLite browser? Let me see. <clears throat> have you loaded the data from the SQLite de DB? Um, <clears throat> so you can, you can query two databases, um, with uh, one query. That's uh, totally just this query I'm trying to get uploaded into the handouts. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of thrown a fit, but um, yeah, you can totally do it. I use SQLite Studio. That's the free little SQLite IDE I use, but there's a bunch of them out there. And <clears throat> let me, um, you, I'll pop that up, but you can totally, write multiple um uh one query for two databases to combine that data and get it in <clears throat> oh, that's so cool. if i share my screen again share 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 minimize so this is sqlite studio it's probably going to be really small <clears throat> but notice i have a couple databases logged in i've moved address books so i can't actually connect it but 
SQLite Studio, really simple, um, but super powerful. And I've just used it for years. Um, started using it way back at BCI. This is where I started <clears throat> writing my stuff. And then BCI was nice enough to get me Sanderson's forensic browser, <laughs> which is platinum grade. And uh, so I switched over to that. <clears throat> And, uh, but now I'm back to this and yeah, you can load in multiple databases, connect to the ones you want, disconnect from the ones you don't want. You can save your queries in here. You can load up new ones. <clears throat> they, uh, I'll connect to one here. You can browse your data through that as well. Um, you know, and then you can filter your data through here. Like if I was, to well, I better not type in that. I'll just type in emulator. Um, and you know, you can do searches. So it's like, it, it is like, it, especially if, once you learn SQLite, you could technically do a lot of investigation work, um, <clears throat> just right in here, uh, in this tool. So just be aware that SQLite studio is an editor. It's not a forensic tool. Okay. So, um, you can add columns, you can change data. <clears throat> we always work off of a copy, of course. You always work off of a copy, especially with SQLite. Um, but just be aware that this is an editor. Yeah, All right. Don't so work with original evidence. Yeah, don't work with the original yeah. copy. <clears throat> this is the one we use in our training. Um, when we do run a SQLite query writing class, we'll talk about that at the end. But this is the program that we use in that. You can change the font size. And there is a dark mode, but I honestly, like I dark mode all the things, but SQL Studio's dark mode is not the greatest. And I think I have, yeah, there's also SQLite Expert. Um, <clears throat> this is a pretty good app as well. Um, I mess with it a little bit. I'm not <clears throat> as big a fan of it as SQLite Studio, but it is a good one if you like that. It's also free for the personal version. Okay, um, but this is another good one where you can write queries, you can view data, et cetera, and work with SQLite. So a lot of good free options. Another one is um, <clears throat> DB Browser. There's a bunch of stuff you can get out there and, and uh, get into it. One thing, it was funny. So I get hired on full-time at Access Data, working for Kevin, yeah. and... Kevin's like, by the way, this is September 1st. I think I started September 1st. And he's like, by the way, in December, we're going to London and we're teaching a three-day SQL like course. I need you to write it. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> so uh, one website I would recommend is SQLite.org. All your stuff is going to be here structure, uh, forensics, basically I took a lot of their documentation and made it readable to normal mortals because it's heavy stuff. And yeah, but, uh, if, yeah, it was great though. Uh, put these glasses on here, Justin, to see your font here that you got. Yeah. Yeah. I know it, the, the, the sites are, <laughs> the, the 4k monitor doesn't translate well a lot of times in pre presentations so <laughs> i had to i had to run and go get my nerd glasses <laughs> <clears throat> sorry oh wait there's uh, a question sorry um, yeah go ahead other than sanderson which you mentioned a little while ago uh what other options are there to quote unquote forensically examine uh, an sql database so your forensic tools will have some stuff in it like FTK, of course, that's what I'm most familiar with. BCI, where I was, was an FTK shop. Before that, I worked as an intern at Lafayette, Indiana Police Department. They were an FTK shop. They will show you the the tables of a database. Um, and then your forensic tools out there will have some work. If you want to write queries and, and rebuild them in a forensically sound way, um, Tools will have various degrees of that as well, but honestly, Sanderson's the top forensic SQL light tool, in my opinion. Um, but I'm also of the opinion that if you're working off of a copy 
and you document the queries that you use and the steps that you use, you're forensically sound because what you would have is somebody else, you know, opposing whatever, who's going to validate your work. If they were to take the database, export it out of your image again, write the same queries that you wrote and ran, they should get the same results. And if that's the case, then it's forensically sound. Even if you're working it in say SQLite studio, SQL, whatever, um, those other things. So that's why. So one thing, if you're new, like new, new to SQLite, SQLite to work with it has to be in a right on right media. It has to be able to write to itself. So I actually, so wrote this class for Kevin fast forward about a year and a half later, I update it <clears throat> to a larger, more robust class. And then, um, I had this data set and I made the mistake one day of going into my data set and opened it and that erased some of the stuff and I had to change the hands on and stuff. SQLite is highly volatile. So you, it, it, it's like, you have to have to work on a copy every time. Just even opening the database is enough to scrub some deleted material out of it, et cetera. Not yet. So yeah. So you just want to make sure you're working off a copy. And as long as you document your queries and document your actions, I think you're going to be good, but yeah, nobody's really doing what Sanderson's doing. I mean, he's, he's ahead of the game and a great guy, by the way, he'll, I've worked with him a bunch through email with his tool and working on queries and stuff. And he was responsive and helped. Anyway, it was great. So, okay. So let's get out of chats and mobile stuff and we'll talk about, you are like in this case, URL history. This is my personal URL history, by the way, my trends from January 25th to April 25th. So <clears throat> Chrome by default will only keep about three to four months of data anyway, anymore. And also for us forensic people, sad, but uh, when somebody deletes their URL history, it no longer stores it as free blocks. It actually zeros out the cell. So that's kind of cuts deep, but <clears throat> so what patterns do we see here? Kevin, what do you see, man? Did you like die on the 11th, 12th, 13th and 14th? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Having withdrawal or I mean, what happened? <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. Yeah. First off, we got the. I'll mark the weekends out on here, yeah. and you can you can kind of see the dips in the data when I when it's the weekend. I I use my computer for work all the time, and I just get to the weekend. I'm like, nah, I'm out. Um, but yeah, to Kevin's point, you can see this gap here on March 11th through the 14th, and. If you were doing an investigation or something on me, and I'll talk about a real world application here in a second where I actually did use this type of data. Um, but I was traveling to our Utah office on this um, end of the week weekend here. So I'm driving, I'm in Utah doing some stuff. Uh, and so I wasn't browsing the web and you can clearly see that in this data that it's gone. And then looking at the other stuff, you can also see like key um, events. I don't know why Valentine's Day is on there, but apparently <laughs> that. Uh, hey, it looks know. good that to your wife. Yeah. That, hey, I wasn't working. Yeah, I'll get Kate in here and see. Look at yeah. right there. The data <laughs> backs it up. Uh, so we can see uh, Valentine's Day weekend. Apparently I took some time off my computer then I had family in town on that weekend. And then I went camping on that weekend. And so you see really low hits, but you can also see the trends of weekends and stuff like that. So if you were trying to show say employee activity, okay, which is um, I got called into consult on one of those where they were looking at an employee who was not was coming to work, but not working and all this sort of stuff. You could see 
start to see trends of like, okay, what? let's look at each Friday. What, what is their Friday versus what is their whatever? Are they not working on Friday? Are they, you know, what's their ramp up on that? And it's not a fun type of investigation because we're all employees of something typically. Uh, but uh, those are the investigations that we run. And so you can start to see trends in people's usage um, for that. And this is stuff, again, this is a super basic query. All I'm doing is saying, give me the dates, okay? But only the day. I only care about the day because if you were to sort by just that column, it's down to the second. And obviously everything's just gonna be one. So I wanna group them up by the day, year, month, day. And this STRF time allows you to do custom groupings like that. And I'm gonna show another type of grouping that we can do. And then Chrome time is microseconds from January 1st, 1601. <laughs> I, oh, another yeah. time to remember. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and um, so you've got to convert that into Unix um, time. And so that's all that is right there is just saying, okay, here's my column that contains that converted into Unix and only show me the day. And then I just give it an alias because I don't want to type this thing a hundred million times. And then I'm going to count all my URLs and I give that an alias. And that's from the URLs column. Is, right? That's your alias is what you're referring to. Yeah. 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 URLs per day. <laughs> um, and this is just, uh, a simple filter. And that's what I love about SQLite is once you get the conversational beats in your head, it's just show me the dates, okay? Count all the things on that day as long as the date is greater than January 1st, 2021, okay? And then we're going to group by the day. Those two go together. And then we're going to order by the date ascending. So smallest to largest. And what you get is this. And then all, well, you don't get this, but you get a list. And then you just throw it in. This is just a basic Excel bar graph. Um, that's okay. it. Yeah, because there was a question. Scott had asked uh, how you how you did this graph. Yeah. It's it's a it's a bar graph because this this information that you see down here, these dates, mm -hmm. let me go down. That's this column right here, and the count is this axis right here. So you just have this two column output with the date and then the number of URLs in that, and then you just put that into Excel and hit bar graph. And it comes out. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> and and then that was the same. If I rewind all the way back up here, it's the same thing. If I come down to the queries, I get one column that's my count. And then the other column, which is the phone number. And then all I did was select that two column data and hit pie chart. And then whoop, it just pops out. That This is what it is right here. And then the same thing with this. I have one column that is the sums of the durations for every number. And then the number two columns and I just hit pie chart and it just builds it. So it's the, the chart building is super easy, super straightforward. You just drop it into these two columns into Excel and then <clears throat> you can pie chart it or bar chart it, or maybe the data you're looking at is actually a, a plot or whatever i don't know squiggly line uh, thing that we can the, the yeah the squiggly thing you know <laughs> we'll we'll be technical yeah i don't i don't chart this isn't charting uh but and, and and you can tell by the level of my i'm actually pretty good in excel but obviously i don't even know what the the line graph whatever you, you don't have to be some savant in excel to build these charts it's usually just a click a button change the sizes you know get it to where you like what it looks like 
and then snip it out or take a screenshot or ship the Excel sheet, whatever you want to do. And it's going to look good. Um, and then, you know, you tell the story you're, you're pointing out, like, see, this happened here. You can see the gap. He's always on the, the computer, but you can see this gap right here. He either deleted something. He was trying, you know, whatever it is that your case is in the case that I consulted on, they had an employee. It was theft of time type case. Uh, this was a couple of years ago when I was at access day, I was consulting it. And so we mapped it all out and you could see clear trends where like no traffic, no work being done on Monday or Friday. Like they were just taking these massive weekends and just chilling in their office and all this stuff. So yeah. And then, and then you put that together with things like out of event logs and login times and all this other stuff to build up your data. But this is pretty and people like pretty. Yes, it's very cool. Very easy to understand when you put it in that graph. Because I, yeah. I used to build these things out. It's like, all right, I, I need to build something, you know, my mother who is non-technical and the slut can read and understand. And this is a perfect example of, of that. Yeah. So, and again, not super difficult um, <clears throat> to to build, uh, but super powerful in the end when you when you put it in Excel. So if we modify that theme, this is that same data, but instead of grouping by day, I am tracking my browsing history by time of day. So you can see that I um, I like to browse from 11 to 12 in the morning, apparently. Uh, that's like when most of my traffic is coming in uh, or whatever I'm doing online. So you can kind of see standard whatever, but you can also see that pretty much at midnight, I'm tapping out one o'clock, uh, maybe there's nothing at 2 a.m., nothing at four or 5 a.m. And three is just, there's some outlier there at 3 a.m. And then at 6 a.m., you know, stuff starts to happen again. You know, most people sleep longer than like three hours. I'm just saying. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's still low. I mean, like, you know. And the problem is I'm Pacific time zone and I've got part of my training uh, co-workers in England. So they start coming online. So, and then anyway, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, so now you can see, okay. And we could write a filter on this to filter by a week. You know, like I want to see just a week or I want to see a month or only these days, or you could even... Uh, if you got really creative, um, <clears throat> say, I only want to see browsing on time of day every Friday. Okay. And you can start to get really creative with the type of information you want to display based on the story that you're trying to tell. So browsing doesn't really matter. Uh, maybe in a theft of whatever, but maybe you're looking at some other type of data. Okay. Uh, if you're in intrusion detection and stuff, the tools will will have this sort of stuff. But let's say that you were doing something like that. You could graph that type hits on your site, whatever, really easily. Um, so, yeah. And this one, again, we're not really adding very many lines or anything. The only thing that we modified was instead of grouping by day, year, month, day, we're now just grouping by hour. That's it. So we're just saying, hey, show me the hour and group all the URLs into what hour they fall into. And then I convert that time from UTC into local time. One thing I will say is if you're gonna use the local time conversion, it's super handy but it's going to use your system time, whatever computer you're on to determine that. It's not going to know like, oh, I, I'm working a data set from the last uh, daylight savings time. Or if you're in part of a corporation or an agency, say like uh, FBI or something that's covering multiple time zones and your evidence came from outside of the time zone, careful that local time will not be accurate. So 
Um, but yeah, super simple. Well, super small. Once you get the concept down of um, these group buys, they're just two column lines. You can start to create some really cool stuff. And it, in URL history, MMS, SMS, call history, those types of things really lend itself to this type of data. <clears throat> you can also start to mess with, um, the name just leaves me right now, activities cache, Windows 10 activities cache, because you can start to see, okay, when are they opening apps? That's a SQLite database. So you can start to write queries to determine, okay, hey, at this time of day, they're opening the apps the most, or this is their app opening history, those types of things. You can start to write queries to group those up, create and show, not create trends. You're going to show the trends. Uh, <laughs> key distinction there, create yeah. a graph, create a visualization, which shows the trends. Um, so yeah, uh, with SQLite. And this is the thing, like a lot of, you know, you're like, well, my, my tool already parses this database 100%. And, and that's great. Uh, but where you can make that evidence sing is taking that parse data and you're like, here's all the raw data, but here's, you know, what the data is saying. And that's what SQLite allows you to do is give it a voice, I guess. Yeah. It allows you to pretty much present it in the way that you need to tell your story, right? Not, you're yeah. not relying on just the tool showing you these lines and graph or these, you know, columns and rows. I, I guess, correct me if I'm wrong, you, you're saying that when you give the data a voice, it's 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 helping the the reader, right, of, of this data understand exactly what you're trying to say, opposed to just these random yeah. columns. And uh, like prior to really getting into this visualization side of SQLite, whenever like even, even here at the company, like they'd be like, we need to build the visualization tool. And I'm like, what? Like, what do people need? But you're, you said it perfect. Like my non-technical grandma needs to be able to look at this data and understand what I'm saying. Like, like, Hey, he was traveling this day and we know this because of X, Y, and Z. And here's a graph that shows it. And you'd be like, Oh yeah, I see that big gap in the data. That's great. And it's really kind of changed my attitude about visualizations as well. Um, and so being able to create your own visualizations with the data, super powerful. Yeah, I, I always said that, you know, we speak uh, Geekanese, right? And yeah. We have to be able to translate Geekanese down to uh, to regular English so people can understand what in the world <laughs> we're talking about. Because most of us in here uh, understand this stuff. Um, but translating that is the is the key. And, and you, you guys can use the Geekanese line. It's not patented to me you're welcome. it's not not protected <laughs> right don has, has a question here it says she uses sanderson forensic browser how are you creating these alt bar graphs r studio oh uh she must have missed that part it was uh excel right is what you said yeah i i like exporting to csv and then that'll just load straight into excel or open whatever or you can even upload it into sheets and um, Google Sheets actually has some cool features that Excel doesn't have that can give you a lot more power as well. Hmm. Um, one feature that I like in Google Sheets is the unique feature. And now you can write unique into SQLite actually. So you could actually, you can control duplicates and remove duplicates and get counts in that way. Um, but in Excel, you've got to write some complex VB um, and do some shenanigans to get uniques. But in Google Sheets, it's just a function. You just do equal sign unique, and it's going to show you those uh, unique values. Um, on my YouTube channel that I do for uh, Access Data and Xtero, I actually walk you through how to break down unique values using Google Sheets. So, oh, nice. Do you have yeah. that URL or can you grab yeah, it? Yeah, I'll, I'll get it. And then I'll show you. Yeah. 
and I'll do a uh, mindless promotion for Cyber Social Hub here real quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, as you going. So some of you, I looked at the polls here, and some of you are not members of Cyber Social Hub. Uh, we, we don't spam too much, I promise. Um, again, open community designed for, you know, the, the digital uh, investigator, essentially, uh, is what that is. And I even created a little pop-up here. If you haven't joined, I'm going to hit send here, and this should pop up for everyone. Uh, I'm going to wait a couple seconds here to allow my um, video to catch up with you because I think the pop-up happens instantly. And by the time you hear me say it, you'll be like, oh, what is this pop-up doing here? Um, then you can kind of uh, take a look at it. So all right, I'm going to hit send here. And I'm going to do a slide out. I won't be completely annoying. Uh, we'll just slide out this offer. And uh, there it is. So if you can see down here somewhere, there is an offer to join. It's normally free. But today and today only, it is free. So go ahead and <laughs> hit join now. Literally just sign up if you want, register. Um, we don't send too We We try to never send more than one email uh, promotion-wise out a week. And that even, I think, is a bit much. But we try not to. But, you know, obviously, we want to keep you guys informed of some of the things, like obviously this webinar uh, with, with, with Justin. Um, keep you up to date on a lot of the things that we're doing with uh, within the hub. Um, we do have an online virtual conference um, uh, that that we started last fall, which, which went pretty well. Um, you know, again, no charge for it, uh, no charge for the vendors. So if you're a, a vendor hiding in there, hint, hint, Justin, that you can uh, come in and speak at the the online virtual event um, as well. And uh, and if you want to see that last year's uh, event, it's still on Cyber Social Hub. Again, CyberSocialHub.com. You can go there and, uh, and and check it out for, for free. Just you have to register, pop your name in there and, um, and register for it. That's it. Um, so there you have it. So I hope everybody gets a, a chance to do that and, uh, and join on to the, uh, the hub there. Cool. <clears throat> so uh, looks like we're running about time. I, uh, I dropped the uh, YouTube, my YouTube oh, I see URL it. in the chat. Um, I post there every Thursday at least, and then I'm starting to branch out into more artifact based stuff as well. But, um, it's not, I try to not make it boring. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's, it's more stuff. It's less like, here's how to click a button and more like how to get creative or how to massage the tool to do what you want. A lot of the videos are, if you're an FTK user, if you're not, I'm starting to post more artifact based videos. In fact, I posted a uh, SQL light um, variant breakdown kind of in preparation for this. I'm still trying to figure out the hand does, hands out thing here. If not, I'll post it in. Um, I'll get it posted here in a second. Yeah, you can post it right in the hub. We have like a whole document section in there now. Yeah. Uh, post it in the thread there. In the <clears> thread. Um, and then. Um, so I think you should be able to see the um, slides, right? This, we are, again, I'm plugging it. That's my job, but we are doing uh, SQLite query writing training. If you have one of our learning passes, it's it just gets put in there. With our learning passes, we have your core tool-based classes, but we're also throwing in like SQL training or... Um, advanced filter training, or do you want to learn how to write regular expressions or all this stuff that we just throw into the pass on a kind of a rotating um, basis to add value to that um, over the year that you have it. Um, but if you want to, we're going to do uh, SQLite query training is three days of nothing but learning how to write queries. And we'll start at the basics. So if you're brand new, we'll walk you into that. If you're experienced, then by the time that you're done, hopefully you'll have learned something new because we get building pretty big queries. But I popped out a little slide out, little coupon thing. You can get a discount for that course if you're not a pass holder. And you can see the dates, August 24th, 26th, and then October 19th and through the 21st. So does this just take us to the uh, to the dates and stuff, right? This this URL? Yeah. So the coupon code is cyberhub SQL, one word, oh, no, and that'll discount your, found. huh? Oh no, I got a page not found on that URL. I'll check it out. Anybody else get that? Oh yeah, yeah you got to log in. 
you got to be logged in. Sorry. Oh, yeah, no. uh, I'll, I can change the permissions on that page, but that is the correct URL. So um, it, it just requires you to be logged in to see it. So let me change it right All now. Right. Cool. All right. Um, well, Justin's working on that. Does anybody have questions over a sequel? Now I, I know he just kind of, he really just skimmed uh, with sequel. Um, you know, obviously if you want to learn more, he's got that YouTube channel that he posted down there in, uh, in chat, um, go check it out. I know I'm going to, uh, go watch some, some of those videos, um, as well. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and pop them into the chat or, or Q and a, um, it, it gives you a better idea of, of the power of, of SQLite and how you can, uh, can look at things. Um, oh, Megan has a, a question about the, the AT, AT, um, there in the in the back of uh, yeah. where you where you got that i think we need to see that closer because <laughs> there's a whole lot of nerd nerdness going on here that yeah it's uh i don't know we got it off of like etsy or something <laughs> but uh yeah my you can tell my monochrome office here <laughs> so yeah i think i saw some pops like when you walked away at one point behind you i could barely See it. Yeah, I got my Voltron Funko Speed Racer. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think, um, yeah, I don't know many uh, examiners or digital people that aren't into some type of nerdness, but it, it does happen. It does happen. Yeah. No Racer X, just Speed Racer. So. All right. Let me. I'm yeah. That link now. Now I still get a. Uh, Oh, okay. Well, it should it should propagate out here in a second and be visible. So. All right, cool, 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 cool. But yeah, Don't have the popcorn popper. Oh yeah, yeah. Justin doesn't have the popcorn popper with the Mandalorian helmet on it. <laughs> no, I I I'm a stove top guy. Uh, but you guys can also connect with me up on LinkedIn. I post videos and junk on there as well. So search me out. Actually but, said that they were watching this with the stormtrooper. Yeah, there you go. That's what we you should have done the presentation in. Yeah, just sat here like this the uh, entire time. Wearing yeah, this thing. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I keep it up on my nerd shelf uh, and hidden away. Oh, if it's gonna stay up there now, it's gonna fall on my head probably. Stay. <clears throat> Don't drop that. Cool. Yeah, no, straight up. <laughs> um. Hey, Justin. Uh. So. Also, for appearing on the Hubcast, uh, I'm going to send you one of these. Now, I, I know I showed you this earlier in uh, there. It, you know, whatever you can drink your favorite uh, shot of Kool Aid out of this, or <laughs> yeah, in it, whatever. But if, if you look on here, I don't know how well I can see this with this little janky camera I'm using. I'm not using my good camera. It's actually over in the studio. It says the Cyber Social Hub Hubcast, uh, and you can see there's a picture of this little guy on here. Most people go, "What is that thing?" If you're not familiar with what an A10 Warthog is, which uh, I don't know, I'm just a nerd like these and I love these things. Um, this is actually part of a round, uh, it's a shell casing, actual real shell casing of uh, a round that was fired out of an A10 Warthog. And there's a certification to say that yes, this was actually fired out and they collected these shells uh, from the training center. These aren't like depleted uranium, like not the real rounds. It's not going to make you grow a third eye if you drink out of this thing. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's real. And we'll, we'll get that sent out to you along with, um, I got all kinds of stuff. If you guys go into the hub, we're going to send you just, just in some of these things too. more laptop stickers, probably what you need. Right. Yeah. And then, um, you know, we're going to be <clears throat> at techno and I know you're going to be down there too, here in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, so we're going to be given, yeah, there you go, Josh. Just add the burp noise. And then I got these uh, uh, police stickers and these I mean, at Techno giving those away. And Justin, if I can steal you at Techno, um, I think I got the green light from those guys to do a couple live, just little quick chats of how things are going and what you're presenting at the show. If you don't mind, man, I'll. Cool. I'll, yeah, I'll hit me up. Here. Yep, hit me up. All right, awesome. Will do. All right. Um, so if no one has anything else, Justin, you have contact information if somebody needs to get a hold of you over at Access Data? Uh, just justin.tolman at xtero.com. That's so it. just Excuse straight me. up. Yep. Awesome. And so feel, you feel free to email anytime. So yeah. So if you've got any questions about, um, any of this stuff, uh, by all means, um, let us know. And, uh, 
Thanks for attending. And if you guys got suggestions on future hubcasts, who you like to see, what you see, if you want to see a deeper dive into this, um, let us know. Uh, but join the hub. If not, until then, guys, we will see you. Take care. Um, we'll see you on the next one. And Justin, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate yeah. you coming on. I really do. Uh, it's like uh, when someone says they're willing to do this, I'm like so very grateful because uh, I ha they have to suffer with me for an hour and you did a great job, man. Appreciate nah, it. it was a good time. Good time. Okay, Thanks. If you guys have any questions, email me. So, excellent. Take care, guys. See ya.